So it's a good morning from the Unity allotment. As you'll see, Andrew's already up here. Good morning, Andrew. What are you going to be doing this morning? I'm going to be uh, planting some broccoli early purple sprouting. Okay. Um, in these, these, this tray here. Okay, perfect. So they'll be ready to sort of plant yeah. out, oh, probably in, next month or yes, so? Yes, in, in about four to six weeks. Perfect. That's really good. And it looks as if you're going to be planting out some more some cauliflowers yeah, as well, doing yeah, the same. Yeah, another tray we'll do some cauliflower. Excellent. And then That's brilliant. I've been doing, uh, coriander. And... I've just seen those as I've walked in. So this is what Andrew's done earlier. So he's planted out coriander seeds. So hopefully those will be coming through because to be fair in the polytunnel it's really quite nice and warm. I'm afraid I have failed you all miserably. I was going to do some rosemary tinctures today if I was able to harvest some rosemary. But as you can see, the rosemary is still in flower. Hence, I can't harvest it. So we will have to wait for another week for that. Okay, so for my next party trick, we're going to plant a mixture of onions. So red shallots, ordinary onions. I'm going to mix them about in this bed, I think. Now, I've already prepared it um, using this wonderful little tool, which is my dipper. For onions one inch deep and then five inches apart. So just do that throughout the whole bed and then the holes are ready for your onions to go in. As I say, I'm just going to mix and match them today, to be honest. I quite like the different onions coming through. It adds for visual experience as well. And let's just see, you know, it's just fun to experiment. That's what the allotment's all about. We were talking to somebody earlier about how much work is involved in an allotment. And it is, as you can see, everything is seasonal. Everything is changing all the time. And you have to almost go with the flow because the weather has a huge effect on everything that we do up here. I have fertilized this soil last week with an organic fertilizer that came from Apsley Farms. So we are ready then to put the onions in. You take an onion, Make sure you've got it the right way round. Okay, so that's the bottom, that's the top. Pop it in its little hole that you've already prepared and then just cover it up. Okay, and that's it. And then hopefully in a few weeks time, we'll see them shooting out through there. So a nice early picking, in fact, the first picking of the rhubarb, which is looking beautiful. I force it up to a point so it sits within a box and then I put mesh over the top. I will take these home and make a compote with them with cardamom, ginger, orange juice and that's really quite a tasty thing to put on breakfast cereal etc. Hi, so just finishing off this week I get an RHS uh, garden magazine and there's a wonderful article about a call to rewild and I think with everything that's going on with our environment I think we all need to maybe be more conscious of this. And the first steps really is to wean ourselves off a tidiness mentality we often have in our gardens and ask ourselves, what would nature do? I think we might all be surprised. So a few ideas of how to make your garden wilder if you're maybe thinking that you'd set aside a little bit. I mean, I have wild flower beds up at the allotment in between the apple trees and it's marvelous to watch all of the different species of bees. You could build a wildlife pond but don't include fish as they reduce the variety and the quality of other wildlife present. So that's something to think about. You could create a log pile and compost heaps near the pond to offer amphibian, reptile and invertebrate habitats. Interesting. Dragonflies, so beautiful. You could say, sow nature wild flower seed mixes in the grass. Um, you can buy them at Bulco's, all of the garden centres, or you can buy seed bombs, which are great. You just chuck them in the ground and um, they do grow. You could install bat and bird boxes. There's an interesting one in a sheltered position with a clear flight line on suitable trees and walls. That's something that um, is well worth it. I love bats. Um, I also love birds and I'm sure that most of us all have something for the birds in the garden. Ensuring that bird baths are 
topped up in any of the drought conditions that we get throughout the summer. That we need to be thinking about more drought tolerant flowers. And also, you know, um, herbs are great. So there's a variety of things that you can do. So think about rewilding. A tiny little spot is maybe something you could get the kids to do. Thank you.